Now, DeAndre's defense attorney claims that since the trial, he's uncovered explosive new information that could help find baby Bianca, exonerate her father, and expose the real villains behind the child's disappearance. I firmly believe today Bianca's alive. I believe that this is part of some kind of huge plan to frame my client. Terry Johnson says the information he's discovered explains those reported sightings of Bianca alive and well at this house. I said, that's the little girl that was in that house. One of the alleged sightings made by retired cop Nikki Gibbs during an unrelated call to the house when she was still with the Detroit Police Department. And another by Michael Salisbury, a court-appointed investigator for DeAndre's defense team. So that's all the little girl I knew. That was her. Now Johnson claims he's made a staggering discovery about the owner of that house, Patrice Hall. But I found out that Patrice Hall was actually related or is related to Benika Jones, the mother of Bianca. Johnson says the alleged information could have changed the outcome of DeAndre's trial. We had no idea at the time that these two were related or had any kind of connection. He says Patrice Hall should have revealed the alleged information when his defense team interviewed her. I would even have been okay if, if Ms. Hall would have come forth at that time and said, you know, listen, I'm related. It's such a coincidence, right? I don't think it's a coincidence. We went to the house in the hope of talking to Patrice Hall, only to learn she no longer owns it, and we are still trying to locate her. But I did ask Benika about Johnson's claim that she and Patrice have family ties. He actually told us that Patrice Hall is somehow related to you. I don't know how. I don't even know if anybody in my family named Hall. I don't know this Patrice. Is he making that up? Maybe she knows somebody that knows somebody that I know, that a cousin, I, but I don't know her. But Benika says she does know the name of Patrice Hall from those reported sightings of Bianca at her house. And she says she even staked out the Hall house herself, hoping to find Bianca. I tried to see if I could recognize her, but I didn't. I just saw people coming in and out of a house. I never saw my daughter. Crime Watch Daily also uncovered a police report from a man who says he actually saw Bianca alive outside of Benika's home. I wish I would have been there. If she was really there, I wish I had been there because I have not seen my daughter since her birthday. I don't know what happened to her. And Terry Johnson makes a serious allegation. If it's found out, or I should say when it's found that Bianca's alive, it would not surprise me if Benika Jones had something to do with this. Benika firmly denies she was anyway involved in her daughter's disappearance. Well, his office also believes that I set my daughter up. They, they think I did it. They told me that they believe I, I, I took my daughter and I'm hiding her to punish DeAndre. And if I would produce her, it would help their client. It's a suggestion, DeAndre says, is too painful for him to even consider. I don't want to believe that because I would want to think that, you know what I'm saying, the person who I loved, who I had a child with, who, you know what I'm saying, I've known for these years would want to do something to hurt me like that. But those who are suspicious of Benika say one motive may have been jealousy, that Benika could have been angry that DeAndre planned to marry his living fiance, Angelie Lyons, the mother of another of his children. And Benika scoffs at that too. He's a serial cheater. You're dating a serial cheater. Oh, I really want that. We broke up for a reason, because he's a terrible boyfriend. <laughs> So no, I'm not jealous that you get to have the terrible boyfriend. You can have the terrible boyfriend. But Angeli says she felt Benika resented her. She would throw like daggers, you know, bring up old stuff that they did before, I guess to try to make me jealous or something. Angeli also reveals that Benika was still having sex with DeAndre and astoundingly with her too. Literally at the same time in the same bed. 
threesomes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, we did. I don't know what that has to do with my daughter, but yeah, we had a threesome. Angelie says it happened more than once. We did the threesome with her maybe two or three times. Then that was it. Angelie says it appeared to irk Benika. Did you get the sense that Benika wanted DeAndre all to herself? Oh, absolutely. And there's something else. He got you both pregnant at the same time. Mm hmm Same night? No. She was already very much pregnant when I met her. Despite suggestions that Benika might have framed DeAndre for the murder of their daughter Bianca out of jealousy and vengeance, she is the one who has steadfastly proclaimed from day one that she believes he is innocent, while it was Angelie's testimony that helped get him convicted. Do you feel partly responsible for putting the father of your child away in prison for the rest of his life? Yes. DeAndre tells me by phone from prison that he was stunned and hurt by Angelie's testimony. She let her fear get the best of her, and she said some things that weren't necessarily true and some things that were taken out of context. But now, here on Crime Watch Daily, Anjali recants that testimony. Well, just to be 100% clear, did you lie under oath? Um, I didn't tell the full truth. Anjali had told the court that after hearing Bianca scream, the child suddenly fell silent. And what is the full truth? The full truth is that Bianca was answering questions after her spanking. You didn't mention this to investigators, even though you were under oath, and why was that? because I was terrified of going to jail. That was just the reigning thought in my head. I'm going to go to jail, I'm going to go to jail, I'm going to go to jail. What about someone viewing this and says, well, she lied once already. Mm -hmm. And she lied under oath, no less. Mm -hmm. How do we know she's telling the truth now? Well, we'll prove them wrong once we find Bianca. DeAndre has already lost an appeal of his conviction but his defense attorney, Terry Johnson, says there's still hope. The only way that he's going to be released, exonerated, would be for someone to find this child. If she were still alive, Bianca would now be eight years old. So you're pretty confident and this is how Bianca may look if she were alive today? I'm pretty confident that this is what she would look like. Mom Benika breaks down when I show her the picture. She looked like her brother. You're saying Bianca looks like DeAndre Jr. here? They got the same eyes. And the eyebrows, that, that was always her dad. Can't keep this. You can have it, yeah. Perhaps this picture will finally solve the mystery of what exactly happened to baby Bianca. Here now to talk about what's next for DeAndre Lane in his fight for freedom and to break down the case against him is criminal defense attorney Rachel Kugel. Rachel, thank you as always Thanks for being so here. Thanks so much for having me. Talk about the cadaver dog for a minute. Is that admissible in most criminal cases? Well, it's interesting because there's a, a lot of decisions in both directions. There have been numerous cases I found in preparation for this, Chris, I found at least six in the US and UK that resulted in convictions using cadaver dogs. Usually it's relied on more for scent, and usually it's backed up by forensic evidence. The fact that a cadaver dog hit on the car, is that an inexact science? I believe it is. I don't think that there is anything to suggest that that is 99% accurate. The times that we have relied on it in most cases that are available for us to look at like this relate to cases in which there was forensic evidence that then supported. Uh, so they didn't rely on the dog alone. The dog then had uh, forensic evidence. The dog evidence. led them to the evidence. Exactly. And in this case, that didn't happen. All they have is the dog's hit. What you have to remember is the dog is not testifying. What we're getting is someone's interpretation of what they witnessed the dog do. The fact that not one but two witnesses came forward to say that baby Bianca was alive, doesn't that create reasonable doubt? Yeah, I mean, it does to me, certainly. Reasonable doubt, though, is ultimately a question for the jury. And so the judge has to decide what evidence gets to the jury, and that's where a lot of DeAndre Lane's best next legal arguments come in. But ultimately, the jury found in this case that there 
was proof beyond a reasonable doubt. What concerns you most about this case? It's the reliance on what I would consider to be junk science, and that's the cadaver dogs in this case, presented to the jury as 99% accurate. In the Innocence Project, there have been over 241 reversals of innocent people, that over half of those have been based on the reliance on unsubstantiated scientific evidence. Ultimately, what happens in this case? It's a tough one because there's already been a conviction and it's very hard to completely overturn that. I mean, the best thing that could happen is that somehow they find this poor child and bring her home and maybe get some real answers about what happened. Rachel Kugel, thanks as always thanks for so being much. here with us on Crime Watch Daily. Now, we want to hear from you. Do you think DeAndre Lane deserves a new trial? Sound off right now on our Facebook page. I'm Chris Hansen. If you like this story, make sure you tune in every day to Crime Watch Daily. You can find where the show airs in your city at CrimeWatchDaily.com. Watch it live or record it on your DVR and watch it at night. And to all those criminals out there, remember, we are watching.